Let's play D and D. Let's play D and D. Let's play D and D. D and D. So I gotta figure out how to get Kimbo Slice caught up to speed here. Oh, Where I figure I can just show up because I didn't actually get to watch last week's video, so I actually I legit know nothing. <laughs> so yeah. We'll fill you in. Uh, so last week when we played, you guys were in the Yawning Portal, there was a bar fight, a troll came out of the well, we fought the troll, uh, Dernan screamed at you about lamps a lot, some people got drunk, some people got laid. Wow, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Is that before the session or after the session? Uh, yes. Both. Um, <laughs> And then you had decided, you had taken a job, sort of haphazardly, from a man named Volo. Uh, some of you know from Volo Guide to Monsters. Uh, he's a semi-famous author. Uh, he had hired you, giving you each 10 gold pieces, and uh, the promise of 10 times that upon the completion of the job, to find his missing friend, Flume Blackmar, who he described as a handsome young man with somewhat sharp features and long black hair, who's a, a very snappy dresser. Uh, he went missing in the dock ward uh, near the last time Flume saw, or the last time Volo saw Flume was in a, uh, let me scroll back down to the dock ward, was in a bar called the Skewer Dragon. Let me Dragon. go get Pete. Okay. The Skewer Dragon. Dragon. The Skewer Dragon. And I think where okay, we left off was with you guys getting ready to travel oh. south from the Yawning Portal. Um, in search of the skewer dragon or flume. Yeah. So this is where all that flunies stuff came from. Yes. Yes. Okay. All the flune in chat. I think it was the sun was beginning to rise over the city of Waterdeep. The morning mist burning off. It's early, uh, late spring, so it's beginning to get warm. But mist still rolls off Mount Waterdeep in the ocean. Uh, the smell of salt air faintly blowing in from the sea breeze, uh, the sun just beginning to peek over the city walls, and I think you guys have decided to meet back up outside the yawning portal. Uh, Layla's a early riser, very chipper. She's already got her flask of ale ready to go. She orders that in the morning, and they have a, have a thing ready for her. I think she comes down. She wants to see you guys. I hope you're outside. <laughs> <laughs> if not, she's just gonna like look around and panic. <laughs> Aww. Uh, I think. Uh, does she get up before or after the sun rises? Um, she's like right about sunrise kind of gal. Okay. Well, then she'll probably she'll probably run into my person. He'll be a person again, like a human. A human. Looking. Okay. He'll be a human-looking person again. Okay. Chris will probably also be there, just hanging out nonchalantly in a corner. Oh. I guess, um, yeah, I'll probably see, uh, Calric. Does he look exactly the same as yesterday, or? Uh, so you've seen, you've seen him both in the... Yeah, he's, he's, it's kind of weird, because he's wearing the same clothes. Oh. <laughs> I think she kind of. Uh, <laughs> she, she probably. It's fine. Yeah, you, you, know. you look a little different today. A little smaller, I think. And then she like feels above your head and is like, hmm. Slaps him in the face. Oh, I jab him in the forehead. Above his forehead, you touch him, even though there's, you can't see anything there. You can feel. You make contact with him. <laughs> Neat trick. Uh, the Thanks. <laughs> oh, you have a safety thing to adjust it. Uh huh. But it's adjusted all the way. <clears throat> Gonna have to let's, eat stuff. Let's, my let's try to introduce yeah. Kimbo. Let's do this. Um, so Kimbo, you are in a bar. Here, I'm gonna yep. change the map for the Yawning Portal. Called the Yawning Portal. It's a place where adventurers tend to congregate. Because there is a great giant portal, a hole, a well, that goes down into Undermountain. It goes down into the, the great mighty dungeon underneath the city. 
Uh, you could pay the barkeep a copper or a, a gold piece to just sit Man, down I'm the rope. Man, I have serious deja vu. Just <laughs> <laughs> sit down the rope to the. Uh... Uh, how long have you been in Waterdeep, and how often have you visited this bar? Well, um, I like fighting, so I'm here a lot for the bar fights. Yeah. Oh, I see I'm some... looking for the computer charger. It's down here. <laughs> Came for the portal, stayed for the bar fights. Yeah. yeah. Is she answering? Because I don't hear her. Can you she not is. hear me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I hear her. I do not. You might have to turn her up some. Um, I, turn her up? I can probably. Let me see. Does this help? I have like mm -hmm. a microphone that. Or I can turn up the mic. It sounds fine to me. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, our snowball decided okay, go to ahead, be Jen. today. Okay. Uh, right. yeah, I come here often. <laughs> I enjoy the uh, atmosphere. Uh, I think um, if you if you're there a lot, then my character probably has noticed you at least maybe once or twice. If you like to, you know, do a fights. What does your character look like? Um. I'm a veteran, uh, and a tiefling. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know a whole lot about him. Um, yeah. Red skin, black hair, a couple horns. Big scar on his face. Big scar on my face. Yeah. <laughs> so if you hang out in the Yawning Portal fairly often, then you've seen a few groups go down into Undermountain, but you haven't seen any come up. <laughs> They don't. They don't seem to come back. Uh, you may have also witnessed the troll fight previously, and you may have also heard the this group of oddballs um, get hired by a very um, a pompous isn't the right word. Fancy looking fellow hmm. to go look for a man, and you can see this group gathering back up. Uh, at least it, it appears that they are getting ready to head out. Um. I guess I'm gonna approach the one who's just sitting around. Chris? <laughs> I don't know that is his name. Yes. But. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh. <laughs> come here often? Uh. Are you. I don't, I don't know. So, are you doing anything later? <laughs> Would you like to? to? Pick me up? <laughs> I, mean, hey, I I can definitely <laughs> lift you. I'm very strong, but I don't know if that's what you're asking for. Oh. Oh. I'm, you um, are quite strong. I, I, I've, I've, I've been here like a like a while. I, I come <laughs> here sometimes. So I'm looking to go fight something. Ooh. Anything. Ooh. We we're gonna go to a sketchy bar across town. Do you want to come? <laughs> How sketchy are you talking here? I mean. She looks you like, up and down. Judge you by the <laughs> one to ten. <laughs> oh, you know, maybe. Wait, is ten really, really sketchy, or is like one really sketchy? That's a great question. I have because it's really at the end of a through. scale. It's like ten one being... really fancy. <laughs> okay, then yeah. ten. Ten for one sketchy. Is just like the, the players take. Yeah. So class. Um, yeah, I'm down for a fight. You're down. I mean, if we went to a non-sketchy bar, we could make it into a sketchy bar, but, you know. That's true. That's true. We could do this. Okay, cool. Well, a guy gave us money, but you weren't here, so, um, yeah. Maybe he'll give you money at the end if you come with us. Uh, well, I don't really have a retirement fund right now, so, uh... Retirement? I'm looking for some work here, too. Yeah, I'm older, I forgot to mention. Oh, okay. Like, okay. I'm like, I'm like three days from retirement. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I don't have a... I, I, oh, there's I no Walmart, I can't go be it. a greeter, are you, so... Are you too old for this shit? No, no, <laughs> I just, um... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, please don't make me roll dice for being too tired to do things. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but no, um, it's just a trope. You're three days from retirement. That's that's like the catchphrase from all those 
uh, Donald Glover movies, Danny Glover movies. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, too old. No, I just, uh... <laughs> Um, I just think I start like looking you up and down, trying to figure out if you are strong enough to go. And I don't. Oh, I don't and like, then this don't right. Do I need to bench this Chris person to prove my worth to you guys? Because I can do, do that. Do it. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Yes, <laughs> please. <laughs> Make an athletics okay. check. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go limp. <laughs> Is it like some brain. small part of me hopes she rolls really bad? <gasps> I'm so hurt. Okay. <laughs> No, do I have to prince this guy? I rolled a 13. I mean, I'm pretty small. good. And so I don't know what I... Let me see what I add to that. You said an athletics? I'm, I'm losing off. Uh, so 17. <clears throat> okay, 17? I mean, how much does Chris weigh? Not very much. <laughs> uh, but you're wearing, like, heavy armor and all your gear? Oh, yeah, that's true. I see. How much? I, I, the 17 high enough, though. My so do you just you lay down, like, on the floor, and, like, Chris lays across your hands? Yeah, and no, just I, goes I, limp. I, I, deadlift, loose body I deadlift him. <laughs> okay, yeah, pick him up. and snatch him up off the floor, like, whoa! Yeah. <laughs> just, like, oh, feet of strength that she reps in the air. She just sort of dangling there. Oh, I like this person. <laughs> You look strong, look strong enough strong. to me. I think he's uh I think he's good. You're not gonna die on us, so yeah. Let's let's How wait, wait, how like you said Chris is pretty small, like how small are we talking? I'm like five four. Like, well I'm I don't know. Like I don't I don't know what makes a small person because I'm taller than all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. But I don't know. I'm like five four. Like, like she means IRL, by the way. A little, little petite, little petite, pocket sized. Not, 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 like, it's yeah. a pocket Sydney. Aww. Aww. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's I think that's good enough for um for Layla. She's she is convinced. He's still got some fight in him left. I, I mean, an extra pair of hands can be nice. After after you put me down, I just kind of like extend my hand for you to shake it. <laughs> oh yeah, you picked him up before greeting him. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. No, but picking it, up not like picking a, him up was greeting him. <laughs> yeah, it's not like a like a hello, my name is Chris handshake. It's like a I approve. You did good handshake. You get the nod. Yeah. We got buff so, grandpa um... now. <laughs> so is the plan to go hunt for Flume now? No, the plan is to go fight at a sketchy bar across town. I don't is know who this friend, guy uh... is. Oh yeah, is that's right. I, I, know, I tried to do it so guys are gonna night, but head out into the city. Said no. <laughs> So. Okay. No, no. You walk out into the streets of Waterdeep, and, and you can feel summer beginning to encroach. You can feel, even early in the morning, the heat beginning to beat down in the city. And you can tell, even though it's early in the year, it's it's going to be a hot one. Uh, you can you can feel, those of you that are wearing heavy armor, as the sun kicks up over the, the walls of the city, you can feel it beat down, and you can feel the beads of sweat begin to collect underneath your armor. You can see people going about the early morning chores, moving goods about the city. Um, you know, old old men with old horses dragging old carts. Um, uh, people doing their early. You see a, a blacksmith as you begin to turn a corner, just getting the fires of his forge started up. Um, is there anything you guys want to do? Are you just going to head straight toward the the skewered dragon? I'm going so, to head straight to the skewered dragon. I do not want to lollygag. Yeah, Chris is all business, honestly. I don't understand cities or people, so I'm just going to follow Hilric. So what's the name of this bar we're going to? Uh, Sketchy McGillicuddy's. Hmm. Is that the one where like the girls throw their tops up during spring break times? I want to say yes, because I've definitely done that before. 
<laughs> but, but I'm not quite sure if it's commonplace. <laughs> no, actually, I don't remember the name of the bar. Um, um, the Skewer Dragon. I just said it like 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Hmm. The skewer dragon. <clears throat> we'll have uh. to save sketchy McGillicuddies for another time. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, they probably are real rowdy there. I don't know how mm. they'll compare it to the skewer though. Well, sketchy sketchy McGillicuddies got closed two months ago for health code violations. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. That's awesome. Well, darn. Wow. Um, does that just like fly by on a newspaper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was in the broadsheets. Like in the broadsheets. Like yeah, because Waterdeep does have like uh, there are several competing. We would call them newspapers modernly, but in time they were called broadsheets. It's just one big ass piece of paper with the news of the day printed on it. You know, now I'm really disappointed that I didn't make a character that that was his job. He like wrote the broadsheets. <laughs> that would be so cool. Like, you're just trying to get the best scoop? Well, I know I at least have one reader. You would Maybe have to have, like, a... You'd have to have one of those speaking stones so you could send back the news from, like, field reports. It'd be the only way that you could go out adventuring. You've, <laughs> you've, got, uh, you've got a backup character for when this one dies later today. <laughs> Oh no! no. <laughs> okay. What is the, yay? the deep concern is real. I'm afraid now. I'll probably die first. Uh, so as you guys are making your way through the city, uh, you 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 turn a corner, um, turning down. Let me let me put you guys back on the water deep map, so I can look at the street names. Um. What was that, Gut Alley? So you turn the sharp corner coming around Gut Alley, uh, heading into the dock ward. And around the corner, you can see an area where um, the the street has, like, the, an edge of the street, like, near an alley has been blocked off. And there's a pair of guards, a male and a female uh, officers of the watch, um, standing on either side of this alley. And you can see they've roped the alley off, and there's a, a crowd of onlookers that they've sort of pushed back. Um, and then lying on the cobblestones are about a half do dozen, dozen, a half dozen corpses. Um, and you can see signs of broken shields and swords, cracked bits of armor, blood all over the pavement. You tell it's been a skirmish, like a fight. Um, you can see tied or, or manacled uh, to, the, to each other and flung up against a wall are three um, disarmed and blood-drenched humans. Uh, there's a, a sort of tall... A uh, heavy-set man with, uh, like, horn rim glasses and a, a big hat um, and a long cloak, despite the warmth, who seems to be in the middle of questioning them. And as you turn up the corner, one of the watch officers, the woman, looks up at you, and it's just like, you know, get on, get on, move on. There's nothing to see here. Move move, move forward. Is, is there anything is there I, can anything I can do? Help? Just missed it. I'm going to stand behind <laughs> someone else. Uh, she says, yeah, you can move down the street. That would be a lot of help. We are looking for Floon! Mm -hmm. No, we're going to the bar. But you that's the bar, correct? We're hoping to find Floon at the bar. This is not what I signed up for. So disappointed. <laughs> we're getting there, okay? Probably, I don't know. Is Floon one of these bodies? Can we see? <laughs> uh, make perception checks? And what were you asking about the body, Susie? Like... Uh, I was asking uh, if any of right. any of the yeah, bodies uh, look like uh, maybe they might be a floon. Um, oh yeah, you can all make perception checks. Uh, let me see here. Oh yeah, you just have to click it. Yeah. I got it. No. Who are you? Oh. Layla! Um, the uh, seven is me, ten. Buster. Not great. Oh, the five is Kurt. 
What? My perception is a one. I think oh. in yours your, is better than mine. Like your character oh. setting, oh you can tell it to um, the name when you roll. Okay, it. Kurt and uh, oh, I guess Kurt rolled twice. Um, Kurt, you don't notice anything in particular. You get a little oh, wow. distracted by the scent of fresh blood mixing mm -hmm. with the dirt. Uh, that that <laughs> that kind of occupies you. Um, Kelric and um, I gotta remember your character's name. Chris, Kel Kelric and Cl Chris. Neither one of you see uh, flunes spread across the the bodies, like in the floor. Um, but um, Layla and I can't remember your character's name. It's only the second session we played. Kimbo. Kimbo Slice. I should remember that. Uh, Layla and Kimbo. Uh, the two of you notice a couple things. One, all of the the bodies um, that are spread across the street. Um, do, do, do. What are you looking for? I'm just trying to. Um, do, do, do. Who's the one that are dead? Uh, so all of the bodies that are on the street have uh, tattoos of um, eyes in various locations, or of like a wheel with ten spokes. Um, on the back of their hands, on their neck, um, some of them like right square in the middle of their forehead, and the three guys that are chained up and propped up against the wall, um, they they all have a snake tattoo. You can see one of them peeking up like a winged snake peeking up around his uh, neck. Another one has a long one that's winding around his arm that you can see. Um, so they all have uh, similar tattoos. The three surviving members all have winged snake tattoos, and all the dead dudes have uh, tattoos of eyeballs. Hmm. Um, Do I... we recognize any of them? Like the the guys that left the bar like the night before or whatever? That's what I was thinking. Did we lose someone? He's Who's that? Just a second. Never mind. No. Maybe your the mic just dropped, but it's fine now. <laughs> Yeah, because oh, that's one cool. of those guys with the eyeballs at the bar we were at. Yeah, some of them were at the bar yesterday. Oh. Hmm. That's so cool. Please ignore my perception roll. <laughs> I didn't realize she could do it this way. Yeah. She is learning. Also, um, Rachel and Danny, if you want, you can... Where the heck is it? Hang on. I'm drawing a thing. You need it. Oh, well, there it is. Is there a separate thing? Wait, hang on. Hold on. Get yeah, you audio. can. Uh, you can do this thing. Put it in the in the Discord chat. Yeah. So you can turn the the names on on your uh, whenever you roll from different character sheets. Mm -hmm. ah. so you the name above it. Let's see. I need a laptop too. Yeah, he's he's yeah. like I'm gonna go buy a laptop. Hold on, he had to restart his phone. For some reason, he lost audio randomly. Aww. Uh, yeah, you guys can change your names too. It might make it easier to remember who oh, you are. Yeah, under the little gear thing, like in the chat, like above the chat, you can change your display name. Oh, cool. If you want. Okay. Okay. Wow, that's really long. Kimbo McSlicington. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yay. <laughs> I like the McSlicington part. <laughs> it's my fancy cousin. Okay. Ah, the McSlicingtons. They were highly regarded in small circles. Mm-hmm. Highly renowned. Tiefling family. Mm-hmm. Hi, <gasps> buddy. Oh, oh, there he is. He's had a long day. He's sleeping. Oh, and then it's you guys. Ugh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. He's had a long day. Poor thing. Aww. Oh, man. <laughs> I've been trying to ask you guys how Got moving it. been. Oh, stressful. Chase finally Aww. moved in up here, though. Y'all are together again? 
Yeah, except his computer is still in Springfield. <laughs> so it's so far away. So he's yeah, using mine good. today. Yep. He has sound. Hooray! Da -da -da. Hush. Hush. Oh. <laughs> you told him hush, and he was like, I need a reason to be told hush. Okay, I can hear you now. So, uh, yes, tattoos. They're all rough looking, teeth lip missing, um, beat oh. up, dirty, bloodied, <laughs> and now slaughtered individuals. And they all have uh, either wing snake tattoos or tattoos of eyeballs. This looks like a gang war. <laughs> so, do we recognize any of the eyeball guys as like the guys that got kicked out of the bar from last night? Last night. No, that's not any of the same individuals, um, but it's definitely the eye tattoos are similar. There's no, none of them are like the dude who had his head shaved and it was completely covered. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy that was fight started the bar fight um, with Yagra, but uh, same, definitely the same motif. Did he die, by the way? Is he dead? Did he the mouse? Yeah, no, he got the holy living crap beat out of him by Yagra, okay. but he just got kicked. He survived. He limped out with his friend. Oh, okay. You need to um, check something. Can I see I if trouble. any of these? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, since Happy Buster's seen a lot of different symbols, um, can I try to uh, roll like a uh, what is history? It? Like a history or religion check to see if it's anybody that I might know. Yeah, you can roll like a history check. Can I assist? Yeah. Uh, if you guys want to put your heads together, yeah, you can roll with advantage. Yeah. All right, cool. We'll just say that the uh, Pappy monologues, and if I don't think, as I hear something that I sound is correct, I will say so. Nope. Uh, 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 these similar symbols are, are arcane in nature and they're designed to protect them from the evils of being possessed by demons. Hmm. I know a thing or two about arcane things. <gasps> Somehow. Ooh. Um, can I like see if there's any kind of ranking um, with um, the tattoos? With the tattoos. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Curtis, you think that Buster is just rambling and nothing he says makes any sense. The symbols are definitely not magical. They're definitely just some kind of marking or, or just fancy design. They don't have any arcane nature to them. Um, Sadly, this isn't any magic. I think this is just a cool looking thing on their arms. Oh, well, and cool. there, doesn't, there doesn't seem to be any delineation of a rank or anything like that. And you've been standing here for a few minutes, and the, the female guard has moved a little closer to you, and, and she's like, well, go on, move. Um, can I try to persuade her to see if I can help? I'm a cleric. I like saying I'm a cleric from the temple of Sur. She looks back at all the dead guys, and then looks back at you, and she goes, darling, I don't think there's much fixing to be had there. Oh, I meant. Oh, I meant. If, <laughs> if, if any of you guys. Oh, we we weren't here. We came in after. Fight's over. We just need to clear the street. And she nods her head down the street. Would you mind telling us what happened here? She, and she points out. that lot, got in a fight with that lot, and now that lot's dead. And then she points down the street. Mm -hmm. Time like to go. You can get to the point. Thanks. <laughs> and yeah, uh, Pappy just. She, she looks at you and she's like, "I like a tiefling who leaves when the city watch tells him to." <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I'm gonna start walking. Let's yeah, let's let's get going. Mm. I will, I will. Okay, so as you're you're moving further and further into the dock ward, uh, the. Let me see. Boop -a -doop -boop. If you guys remember the last campaign, the uh, 
Slayer's take was right about you know. Uh, but you guys are heading further into the dock where this, the smell of like salt in the air gets stronger uh, and the breeze coming off the ocean picks up, and though it's warm. It's a, it's a warm breeze blowing in, so it doesn't do much to cool those of you that are trudging along in your heavy armor. And as the sun comes up, you can see that as you move further south, the buildings get tighter and tighter packed and you get less and less sun though. So it does cool off a bit, but the buildings here are, are packed together tight like tenements um there's that smell of salt in the air but also the smell of like excrement and, and the drainage doesn't seem as good you're definitely moving into the rougher part of town most of the 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 street lamps have had their glass smashed and the candles or lanterns stolen out of them um and as you like come around a, a bend as you, you head down getting fairly close at this point you come around a corner and there's a a sign hanging out in front of a, a shop and in the sign is a, a beholder like carved it's, there's no no nothing written on the sign um but there's like a purple beholder embossed into the sign it's sort of swinging back and forth lazily in the, the breeze as you come closer to the shop you realize that the window itself the glass i'm off camera the glass is um itself is tinted purple and as you glance into the shop like um in big arcing fancy like darker purple than the rest of the window script and it says old zoblob shop and zoblob is spelled with an x instead of a z and then hanging just inside the purple tinted window is a giant what looks like taxidermy creature one big giant eye in the center and stalks hanging off of its head it is dyed purple and you can see other things that are purple inside the shop and it's sort of hanging there menacingly like looking out through the window oh, how charming. can i roll knowledge so something for that to see if i know where the boulder is yeah arcana cool. Ooh, i also yeah. want to do that i know what a beholder is yay congrats <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, you you definitely know that's a big ass purple beholder. <laughs> like I, it was dyed purple. I don't want you to can't know tell through the window where he got that. <laughs> don't you know? Don't we? Must no, I kind of do. I want to go to this bar. It is not the skewer dragon. Admiring this. Yeah, we're getting off track, you guys. Is there anyone nearby that I can ask can for ask direction? direction? It's like a rough looking. I mean, you know where you're going. Um, it just just happens to be on the way. Oh, okay. But there's like a rough looking half orc, uh, walking down the street. He has a like a wagon that he's pu pushing, like a almost like a big wheelbarrow with two wheels. He's pushing. It's filled with um. Oh, uh, like iron iron bars. So it looks like it's super heavy. He's just shoving it through the mud covered and probably other things covered street. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Is he hot? What happened? Not really. Why not? Then yeah, she's not interested. <laughs> she's just gonna continue on the way. Okay. Um. So yes push forward eventually you come into like a narrow alley uh let me see it is net street and fill it lane hmm. are you wherever drawing that on is this? are you drawing on this map somehow i can i haven't been i can no, do I, this too. oh that's so cool okay nice um yeah so i i don't know where net street and fill it lane is i'll find it eventually but you come you come down the, the there's like a sign outside of an alley that that shows a dragon on a spear and it points down like a narrow alley and you go down this alley and then there's a, a set of stairs at the end of the alley that goes down so this place is like down in a basement apparently and it you can smell through the door before you even go into the place the mixing with the salt air and and the general stench that seems to be the dock ward you can smell the smell of like stale ale and like body sweat. Um, can we do the circles like you have been? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you click and hold. Click. Yeah, you just click and hold. Oh, it's right there. Yeah, here's here's fill it. <laughs> so this place is back up in this alley. I don't like already here. 
smells like a man cave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, man cave. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As someone who's been in a cave with many men, this does not smell like that and is far worse. <laughs> oh, what is a man cave? And you can see, like, down on the the floor below where it opens up and there's the door. On either side of the door, there's a pair of windows, but they've both been smashed in at some point and, like, halfway boarded up. Oh, and you oh, can yeah. see through the cracks in the in the windows uh, a group of, uh, like, maybe five or six people, even this early in the morning, seem to be sitting around inside the bar drinking out of giant-ass tankards that are, in, like, at half a gallon. And um, I'm sure they're like they're all... half a copper a piece. And they're they're sitting around um just boozing it up early in the morning. They they look like dock hands, like uh like rough and haggard bearded men mostly. They have like really early shifts. Mm, yeah. Alright, well let's let's roll up in here and talk to these folks. Um they're probably not part of the evening crew that are usually here so but we can maybe ask the barkeep maybe he knows about a floon okay so you guys want to head in sure. okay so you open up the door the floor is sawdust the tables are haggard and uneven some of them are stacked up on like they have stuff shoved under the legs to keep them from rocking um there's three or four people scattered about drinking quietly uh, and behind the bar is like a hulking, um, I don't know what, what race do we want to use? Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. It's like a half elf, like a half elven man. You could see, you could see the, the point of his ears peeking out underneath his like greasy black hair. Uh, he doesn't seem to have inherited much of the, uh, the handsome features that most elves seem to present. His, his features are sort of sharp and gaunt. He's got one long scar over an eye that seems to be like grayed out, like uh, like it doesn't work right anymore. And he's one of those people that, like he he might be twenty, he might be fifty, but like it, it's hard to tell. He looks like he's had a rough road, and he sort of just like nods at you when you come in. He doesn't give you a, a welcome, and he's doing that classic like bartender thing where he's cleaning something that like doesn't really need to be cleaned, and in a place this dirty probably won't make any difference. So he's like wiping down the bar with a dirty rag. Yeah. He just. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, I... Layla takes a seat at the bar, but before she does, she pulls out her handkerchief and lays it across the stool, and then sits on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna yeah, stand there. So you sit down. And he looks around. There's a bunch of you too, so he kind of looks around. He's like a little early to get, and he looks at the rest of his patrons, and then he shakes his head. Like you, like the <laughs> the thought slips his mind. He's like. Uh, drinks. Yes. <laughs> Coffee or or a ale. And he looks behind. Him. There's like three big kegs behind him, and they're all identical. And he's like, "We kind of have like one thing." Yeah, that. He shrugs. He pulls out all they have too are these all all identical giant ass wooden tankards, and he starts filling them and putting them out on the bar. Um, uh, Chris is just like, uh, none, none for me, thanks. I just push mine back <laughs> or like towards someone else. Want it? Someone want it? I'll take it. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Uh, it is stout, and uh, dude, I know there's rules for goods and services, but they're in the dungeon master's guide, and that's in my backpack somewhere. Um, <laughs> It's strong and it's warm and it doesn't taste super great, but if you drink it, you will get the drunk. Uh, and he waits for you guys to pay him and gives you the price. I assume you throw the, the money out on the counter and he swipes it away. Yeah. And then he goes back to cleaning the spot that doesn't seem to need to be cleaned. Uh, there's one. There's only two people that are actually sitting at a table together, and they're playing some kind of card game um, with Ooh, big I giant cards with like dragons painted on them. Ooh, I want to go watch. Um, I want to go if ask you... if I can join in. <laughs> yeah, and this like old, like you know the Gordon's fisherman. 
the guy from the box with the fish sticks. Yeah. Fish sticks. Ah, you know, like the, yellow the long, yeah, yeah, long gray beard. He doesn't have the yellow raincoat, but the the, the guy that looks up to respond to you looks like that. And he says, uh, "You'll have to wait till we finish a hand." Okay. Playing for coppers. I don't know. And he sort of looks you up and down. Might be a little low for someone like you. I just point at the cards and I'm like, what are these? And he looks at you a little confused and he goes, it's three dragon ante. It's it's a card game, kid. It's about dragons? Well, there's dragons on the card, but no, it's not about, it's just a game. It's oh. for fun, past the hours. <laughs> is there any I have never heard of three three dragon anti or whatever like at all and then it's popped up twice in the last two weeks <laughs> that's how it works so yeah they finish a hand and you watch them play uh Kimbo are you proficient in playing cards I'm proficient at dice I think at dice I remember correctly but I I gambled a lot Part of the reason I can't retire. <laughs> <laughs> you are proficient in dice. Okay, make a make just like an intelligence check. So just okay. d twenty plus your intelligence modifier. <clears throat> if you just click on the word intelligence on your character sheet, it'll roll it in the chat. Or you can roll real dice. I don't. I don't care. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do the chat thing because that's handy. Okay, two. Uh, you have no fucking idea how to play this game uh you've never seen uh, you may have oh, seen I, it played before but cards. no one's ever i know you. what a card is <laughs> yeah well, so uh, but i'm sure me, that's the reason you can't like retire because you're uh no it, it's it's, it's like po it's more similar to poker mm -hmm. uh but they'll deal you in they they deal you like uh two cards and and you you watch and you kind of just do the thing the guy the other players are doing to see what happens um make a, another like intelligence check for me to see how well you do. <laughs> okay. Uh you 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 lose the first hand. You only lose a couple of co couple of copper pieces than not playing for much money, but you lose the first hand pretty badly. Uh and the two guys you can see them smiling and and sort of chuckling and back and forth at each other. Um yeah, what is everybody else doing while uh, while Kimbo is is gambling? While Kimbo is losing at cards, <laughs> I'm gonna walk back over to the bar and be like, uh, "We're looking for some guy, Flute, 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 Flute. I don't know what his name was. What's his name? Uh, his name's Floon. He's super fancy looking, I guess. And the bartender shakes his ratty, like greasy hair. Yeah. No, nah, Floon's a it's a pretty common name. A lot of people named Floon. Um, I don't know. I, I I know he gave us a description of him. Isn't he blonde? He has black hair. Black hair. Um, black hair, kind of hawkish, like sharp features. Very handsome and a very snappy dresser. Uh, apparently, he's got black hair. Is snappy, not very smart, but very chatty. He's got sharp features. Who has the highest passive perception? Mine's a 13. Mine's a 14. Yes, yeah, so far it's been Kelric. Uh, uh, Jordan's not here. Okay, so Kelric, when, as you guys start, yeah, as Kelric and Chris, as you guys start trying to describe this guy to the barkeep, you hear one of the, like the guy who's sitting off by himself drinking sort of snort. Like, <laughs> that's it. He snorts. What's that about over there? So, Kelric paid for a beer, but he didn't drink it. We never got one. Okay. So he just picks up the beer and like moves it to the guy that snort and puts it in front of him. And then goes back to what he was doing. Oh. <laughs> When you set the, the ale down in front of him, the guy looks up at you and says, Man, you fancy boy coming in here, slumming it, trying to rub his money in his faces with his friends. 
Yeah, we saw him. Oh, yeah? You saw him? You know where he went? You know where he is right now, maybe? I wouldn't call him a friend. And he goes, yeah, uh, we don't actually know. dead, if uh, anybody was lucky. Oh, mm-hmm. what? That type, you know? I'm not welcome here. Did you kill him? Did you eat him? Why would he eat him? <laughs> yeah, he looks at you incredulously, and he's like, See, this is what I'm talking about. You rich folk from up north in the city coming down here. What about thinking we're what cannibals? Applies to this guy. I look nothing like a rich guy. Yeah, I don't I don't think Chris really looks if, rich, but um not uh, you're the only person who I've seen that does that. Not you. Not not the guy who's sitting at the bar. I'm talking to, to Buster. By the way, what eat people? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you put blood off the floor. Oh yes, well that was different. I was trying to uh learn what he learned. Um, I think he was dead. <laughs> yes. You can't learn much from a dead guy. Are you Cookie oh, Monster? Yes. <laughs> oh god. Oops, I love it. The guy at the table just goes, Look, I don't I don't want any trouble with you types. He was in here. He's not in here anymore. We're not looking for trouble. We're just looking for that guy. I mean I know what to say. If uh I'll I'll tell you what if you if you know what direction he was in, and you let us know, we'll go away, and I'll buy you another beer. Um, make a persuasion check. Ooh, can I help? Yeah, you can make it with advantage. What do you say to help? Um, I think. Do I just roll it twice or? No, it, no, it rolls it twice. It rolls it twice there. So you rolled an eleven and a two. I think what I say is. Yeah, there'll be another beer in it for you. Did my did my intimidation even do anything? What is that? An eight? No, it's a fourteen. It's a fourteen. I'm gonna set it to where it, it asks you if it wants it, if you want to roll with advantage in a second. Okay. I was wondering what those were because it's like, why does it always show two numbers? It always like by default it always rolls advantage and you just take the number on the left unless you have advantage or disadvantage. There, I, oh. I, it should now when you roll. Let me borrow Chris's character sheet for a second. No, don't change it. Uh, you'll have to restart it. Um, next time we play, though, it'll pop up and say, like, do you have advantage or disadvantage? And then you just click which one it is. Right. It's a different character sheet that has, there's like one character sheet that just has like a little check mark at the top. For when you uh, this turn, it might actually manage this turn or whatever. Um, I think that's a I think that's this character sheet, but it's like a setting I have to change. It's fine. Um, he doesn't seem overly persuaded by your offer of beer, but Buster sort of looms over him, uh, and he looks away and probably has flashes of being eaten by a half orc, um, and says, <laughs> um, "Look, fine, yeah." Your friend, or whatever he was, he was in here with another guy with a weird accent. Weird accent guy left. He met another guy, fancy, looked a lot like him. And they left together. And then, like, some other people that aren't, I don't know, regulars, they aren't the normal type in here. They followed him out. That's all I know. They went up the street. It's hard to tell where anybody's going when they leave this place. Is up the street, left, or right? He shrugs. Left or right? <laughs> He's intimidating. He points at the door and you can't see outside really. And he's like, you can't. I don't know. Did any of these people happen to have tattoos on them? Uh, no. Hmm. Are the people that left the bar? Yeah, the fancy group that came in. After. I mean, it was uh, not the two you're looking for, but the... The ones that left, maybe one of them had an eye tattooed. I don't know. Tattoos aren't that different here. 
Oh, can I ask the guys? He like playing... rolls up a sleeve and he's got like a ship's anchor tattooed on his arm. Ooh. Can I ask the guys I'm playing cards with if they know anything about mm -hmm. snakes and eyes? Yeah, make a persuasion check. The guy who likes playing dice games asks about snakes and eyes. <laughs> I'm trying to hint that we should switch games. <laughs> um, let me see if I can do this. Persuasion. Nice. That's a good roll. Um, they sort of look at each other curiously, but they, you know, they, they've been drinking, you guys have been kind of laughing and playing cards at this point. You've lost some money, which probably helps. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, they nod, and he goes, yeah, the, the Xanathar, the, his little cadre, they, they got the eye tattoos, and them Zents that moved in recently, they're the ones with the, uh, the winged snakes. Hmm. Good to know. Thanks. Right. And they look at each other like, okay, that's it. And they start dealing the next hand. <laughs> I mean, that's really yeah. all I'm here for. Uh... Hmm. Yeah, so what do now? Well, we're not going to fight anyone, which is a pity. So I guess I'm just going to keep playing cards until <laughs> I lose enough money that I can Sorry. leave. <laughs> I, I think... Okay. Maybe we'll um, go outside and look for a trail of some sort. I think if you talk while my mic is muted, the stream won't hear you. Sure. Alright, maybe. So you just, you're gonna head back out to the street? Yeah, yeah. maybe we can right. look, like you said. I am gonna buy the guy okay. here, though, because I said I would. Gonna okay, yeah, you purchase him his additional alcohol, and then uh, you guys head back out? Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. Thanks for the so, game, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> um, yeah, so you step back out. Uh, you know, an hour or so has passed with you traveling down further south, and the, oh, so it's uh, getting on toward mid morning and getting warmer. If an hour has passed, uh, I'm I'm back to being a furball again. I probably like stepped behind something for like ten minutes, and then came back two feet taller. <laughs> Have you grown or have I shrunk? Uh, what? Chris, like, yes. steps up to Buster and, like, does that little thing where she's, like, measuring him. She's like, no, <laughs> you're the same. Oh, that's <laughs> uh, I have not shrunk. Big I think bigger taller. So the activity in the streets has picked up. People are moving about more, uh, going about their daily business. Uh, moving goods, a, a lot of uh, hustle and bustle on the the larger streets. A lot of uh, goods being unloaded off ships and taking per taken further into the city. <coughs> Excuse me. You can still see the old Zoblob shop just out in the street in front of you. Uh, and yeah, there's just people sort of going about their daily lives. So the city's starting to get warmer and woke up. Um, what do you guys want to do? Or do you, how do you want to try to pick up this trail? Maybe. We saw a beholder a while back, right? Yeah, it was in the Zoblob yeah. shop. It's like across the street from you. Is Xanathar a beholder? Yes. Yeah. We know right. that Xanathar. I mean, if you've lived in Waterdeep for a few years, probably. Oh, no. No, you don't know that Xanathar is a beholder. You just know that the Xanathar Guild is like, it's like a crime syndicate. Um, oh. We do Maybe... know what the eye falls. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could ask the shop with all the eyes if they saw something they have the eyes they left. should have seen it yeah <laughs> okay. you guys want to head to the old zoblob shop yeah zoblob. okay so as you open up the door this puff this like cloud of lavender lavender scented sort of pur purpley smoke comes leaking out of the door i uh, immediately start sneezing <laughs> um it's heady and it it it's like thick and as it wafts out of the the shop you take a look around and everything inside this shop is purple uh oh, every yeah. dusty knickknack on the shelves is a deep violet and sitting cross-legged on top of the counter wearing like a plum colored suit 
uh, with uh, his head shaved clean uh, and his cheeks decorated with uh, painted on like uh, eyes, like purple eyes and face paint. And he's got this long purple pipe clutched in his teeth and that's where the, the heady like lavender smelling smoke is coming out of. Um, is this little gnome. He's just sitting cross-legged on top of the, the counter, which is also purple. And he sort of smiles, and you can see his teeth are stained a little bit of the purple color, his teeth and gums. And he goes, uh, Hail and well met. Come, browse the shelves of the most curious shop in the world. If his favorite color is green, I'm going to laugh my ass off. And then, I guess he does the little bow, and his head like nods down. His his eyes just stay shut, and he just sits there, like with his head down, his the hand out from the flourish. And then he like sort of snaps back up and puts the pipe back in his mouth. Oh, what kind of pipe tobacco is that? And he it's the wacky looks at it. <laughs> this, my dear, is not tobacco. He puts it back in his mouth. <laughs> Oh, you. And you can see the stuff beholder by the window and and just stuff. Like, just, it's a knickknack shop. It's like one of those roadside antique stores. It's just crammed with, like, random stuff, but it's all purple. Do they have lavender perfume? Yes. I want some of that. So you go for the fact they have an assortment, different potencies from different places. Do they have, like, a crystal glass one? Uh, Yeah. I'm going to ask him okay. if that's a purple people eater in the window. <laughs> he squints at it and looks over at you. No, kind sir, that is the Zoblob. The what? Mm. Zoblob. He points at it with his pipe. That is the Zoblob. What is the Zoblob? He oh. points at the boulder. That. But what is that? <laughs> that is that's the Zoblob. It's what a, is, it's a beholder. It's the, the creature that that is is called a beholder, and maybe its name is Zoblob. Zoblob. Hmm. I like to say that name. It is fun. <laughs> now say it hey. backwards. He nod. He nods it oh. at Buster, and he's like, "I tried to rename the shop once." <laughs> and not <laughs> meant well. Huh? No, people just like the name Zoblob. Zoblob. I left it. So he takes another big long draw on the pipe. Mm. Yeah, and you come over with like your little lavender yeah. thing, and he's like, oh, good choice. Fine terroir on that vintage. That'll be two gold. What's the... Well, actually, let's find out how much it is. Two gold seems a bit steep for a small bunch of lavender. It's That'll be six thing. gold. Oh, <laughs> oh my. All right, that's the good one. You have one? There's one over there that's only two. Let me point at another one. But that's the fine, that you, good taste. Mm. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he goes, yeah. Okay. And he puts the pipe bag in his mouth. <laughs> I think she's gonna like walk up to him and she goes, Could I buy it for two plus a kiss? Uh, make a poison, check. yeah, persuasion check. Uh, I will roll for you, yes. I've stolen your computer. Kelrick turns pink. Okay. He looks at you and he goes, what kind of a kiss? All persuasion. Cheek, forehead. <laughs> Closed mouth. Because you can't, you can't kiss me on the lips. On the cheek. Okay, that's fine. He puts the pipe in his mouth and leans out his cheek. And she goes, Aww. Okay, two gold pieces. Hold out his hand. Aww. It disappears quickly into like his sleeve, like it just vanishes. Like uh, he does a little slide of hand trick, Ooh. and he goes, "Please browse some more. Let me know if." Oh yeah, mm. we'll do that. <laughs> actually had a question. Um... And he looks up at you like he just noticed you for the first time and goes, 
Wow, you're tall. Sorry. <laughs> um, and then he goes, hail and well melt. Come and browse the shop of the most, come and browse the shelves of the most curious <laughs> shop in the world. Takes another puff off his pipe. This place is very curious. Um, yesterday there was a, a guy that came out of the, and he gives like the briefest description he can manage. Uh, okay. Of the guy and, and says, we were wondering if you saw which way he went. And he goes, a uh, handsome fellow had another man with him. I remember that. Came out of the bar across the way. Came out into the streets. Got knocked out by a bunch of rough looking dudes and they drug him off. Mm. Oh. Was I maybe uh, one of them wing snakes. He smiles like at uh, really heavily at Layla. Uh, does she get any she... eyebrow? <laughs> eyebrow action? Yeah. No. Hmm. Probably <laughs> on his neck. He had a tattoo of a bat snake. No, 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 no. <laughs> None of them familiar to me. They don't shop for some vineries here. You wouldn't happen to sell violets, would you? And he like, are those purple? <laughs> he like stretches be. out. That's that's Chase asking because I don't know. They can be. Uh, okay. Uh, he stretches out violets. like he puts his feet. <laughs> out on the counter and like lays down and he's like I have an assortment of purple flowers both dried and fresh around the corner behind that pile of whistles. Uh, Kelrick's gonna want to look over there. and there's a shelf with just like a bunch of like purple whistles on it and you can't you can't quite see around the other side so if you, but if you go around the other side he does have some cut flowers all purple and then some dried like press ones. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a, a small bunch of violets and sneeze more. <laughs> As you come back around, he's like, "For that lot of the finest purple flowers in all of Violeton, four gold pieces." Um, Violeton's not a real place. Can I get half it of is, the bunch for two? It is in the Zablob shop. <laughs> I walk over. He nods. Over. He's like, yeah, if you want fewer, then you may pay less. I believe right. that's how things work. Half, half the bunch for two. But so I whisper, Kelrick, just give him a kiss on the cheek. Kelrick's oh. ears turn like bright red. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Thanks. It's, it's fine. Suit yourself. And he's like, but if you're looking for them, them fellows with the snake tattoo, everybody knows where they go. Where do mm. they go? They go down Candle Lane. Worst name ever. <laughs> Candle Lane. I'm going to walk outside. Yeah, they, they go that way, down the candle. And then he goes, welcome to the Zoblob shop. <laughs> as we walk out the door. Yeah, she has to start to leave. So he's like, oh, feel free to return for all of your, what's another word for purple? What's another color for royal? Purple? Bra no, royal is not. Like, uh, maroon looks purple to me, but I don't think it's maroon to other people. Uh, magenta, violet. Okay, no, yeah. yeah. Cuff, feel, feel free to return to the Zod Blob shop for all your indigo, mauve. magenta, purple, Lavender. maroon, and mauve needs. And he <gasps> puts the pipe back in his mouth. Solferino. That's the word you want. Okay, yeah, sir. For all of your Solferino shopping. He puts the pipe back in his mouth. 
and the door slings really shut with a a puff of uh the heavy purple smoke being dissipated by the wind of the door. <laughs> Dog lob. That, that might fun. be my next character name. That's a really good word. Mm-hmm. Purple tiefling <laughs> named Solferino. <laughs> very similar to Lou Ferrigno. now. Grand Farina. Okay. So yeah. he he's given you sort of some vague directions. Okay. Yeah, he said to head to Candle Lane and he just sort of pointed down the street. Cool. I don't know where that is. I'm gonna start walking whatever way that was. Whatever way he directed you. Uh yeah. somewhere on here is actually Candle Lane, but I don't remember where. But anyway, you guys after a few minutes, more minutes of wandering around the city, you, you find your way to Candle Lane, and the, the buildings here are so tightly packed, and they overhang each other so closely that it blocks out the sun. Um, so it it's a less of a, like a um, like a streetway is like a dartly lit, and the hand the sign that says Candle Lane is like hanging loosely from one rusted old nail, um, and it. You can see it. You're, it's like looking down into a dungeon. It's this narrow, dark alley, uh, and it's odorous. The smell of sewage comes up out of it. All of the street lamps in the air, inside the street, like you can see the one right next to the, the street has been smashed and like partially torn down. But way down in the distance, like toward the back of the lane, um, like 30 or 40 feet down Candle Lane, you can see one little light sort of flickering. Can I do like a perception check to see if we can like figure out the place we need to go? Like I just right. looking at like where foot footfalls might be. Yeah, sure. Or drag marks. Hmm. Hmm. Twenty-three. Um, it's the street's muddy, but you can tell like people have come and gone down this alley quite a bit. But it it's narrow, and there aren't doors that you can see. You can't see down the alley very well. Or you're a tiefling, you have dark vision. Yeah. Okay, so there aren't doors down the alley. Um, it just sort of dead ends, and what looks like a big iron gate. Okay, it's higher up on the map than uh, than your screen's on. It's back up north somewhere. Yeah. Uh, it's like okay. to the upper right of stock or part of the stockyard. Rachel found it earlier. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Candle Lane. Oh, I'm, I'm on Susie's stream, by the way. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Let me know if anybody says anything. Yeah. So it just, it, he points you off in that direction after a bit of finding it. So you're probably on the dragon, uh, the way of the dragon, which is one of the two major streets that go through Waterdeep. Uh, it splits off from the high road, which runs through Waterdeep, Baldur's Gate. Um, yeah, it, it runs all the way up and down the coast. Um, it's a, so there's a lot more traffic, pedicabs and coaches and, and people on horses going back and forth behind you. And then you just see this narrow, dark alley peeking out. This looks crusty. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start heading towards the gate. Crusty. And you just start walking down. Let me put yep. you guys on a different map. I think Layla takes out that handkerchief from earlier. Mm -hmm. And she sprays a little bit of perfume on it. And like ties it around her face. And ties it around her face. Let me find your guys' tokens. Oh, Chris, you need to uh, bring your hit points back up to full. Oh. Do you have Kimbo? Ooh. Yeah, that's Kimbo right here. Oh. Oh. Yeah, and I think I have Sight already set up. Yep, yep. Mm, I can't see anything. Yeah, I don't I see haven't moved either. you guys. I haven't you moved you over to the map yet. Oh, cool. Okay. With your token. Boop. Oh, there we go. Now you should be able to see bottom left. Oh. Some of you will be able to see. Some of you are human. It's still black for me. Oh, wait, here we go. It's doing uh, a thing. Uh, Who am I missing? Hey. Which one is it? I just hit back on accident. I think you're Hang missing on. me. I'm missing somebody. Is Curtis? One of the tokens didn't get grabbed. Uh, you are the tiefling. You are the red dude with the sword, Jennifer. Yes, thank you. 
I based on the art you gave me, I thought that that was a fairly decent token. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Copy. Oh, I think mine is this one. No, wait, that's cat. Paste. Um. Oh, do I not have? Hang on. Who is this? Oh. This is Kelric. Mm -hmm. And do I have a token for? So that's Papa Nut. Mm -hmm. That's a yeah. Uh, I don't have a token for you, Rachel. For for Curtis, for yeah, yeah. I I have one. I can uh, I don't know where to upload it to give it to you. You you can just send it to me anywhere, and I can upload it. Let me um, I'll just grab you one really quick. I'll get you a temporary one. You're a half orc, right? No, I'm a. I'm a dragon man. Okay, well that's you right there. This is this is the uh this is the pet the dragonborn. Yeah, I don't know why I can't play the <clears throat> dragon. Probably because it's on my thingy and not yours, my account. Oh, uh, uh yeah, I can fix it. Hang on. Buster nut, people. Oh, thank you. Safe thank changes. You. Can you move it now? Yeah. Cool. I don't think there's one for Curtis. Uh, he's the half orc. Yeah, I, I don't have a token for Curtis yet, but I'm gonna grab one really quick. Uh, so dumb question. We can move them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You just yeah, click yeah, on it. And, and drag. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the okay. I was in a different view of it. Oh. Yeah. And that's okay. you right there. And then you can see. You should be only able to be able to see what your character can actually see. Yes. I can see everything. Uh, I can't. I don't. Well, I mean, I can see what I think. I can see what other people are seeing. I now, once, a bunch of like once we've seen it, period, yeah. will it stay visible? Yep. Okay. But if like if there's something, so if you move through a room and then it goes out of line of sight, and something moves into that room, you won't be able to see it. You can see what everybody can see right now because you're all set up to control each other's tokens because we're right. jumping computers and stuff. That's just to make it easier on you guys. So okay. you will be able to see what every everybody's character can see. Mm. Uh, I don't have. Did you say you sent me art on? Uh, uh, I need yeah, like a top down yeah. orc. Oh, he's so cute. You can just do the top oh, one for now. Um, oh. what class are you again? You're a Rachel? bard, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I have one for Rachel. I don't have one for Denny. Yeah, bard, uh, half orc, whatever works as a temp. I don't have a half orc bard. Let me just grab a random half orc. We got this guy. Yay. It's a, pretty much the same token I use for Mr. Denton. Now, what's your character's name again? Curtis? Curtis. Curtis. Pass site 60 by 30. Boop. Okay, we're good to go. Yay. <clears throat> All right, and where was I? I closed my. We are in the bump. Okay. Um, yeah, so you come to this this gate, um, this just giant wrought iron gate, uh, huge uh, metal. The, the one flickering candle seems to be set to the door over across the way. And it, it's like a delivery yard. So there's a big yard for deliveries. There's a window off to the to, to the north. Um, there's a, a rough pathway that leads down to it. And uh, and this is a door. This is a window. And then there's a small side door. And then the little dots are the uh, the gate or the fencing around it. Is the door open or closed? The doors are shut. Hmm. I'm gonna open. Can can we open the door? Can I just try to open the door? See, the yeah. gate has a heavy like chain around it, and it's locked with a padlock. Hello. Um. Does anyone want to try to? The do fence itself like is a, about. The fence itself is about ten feet, mm -hmm. and it has like the big like wrought iron spikes on the top of it. 
Hmm. And I could probably jump over it, but you guys with the padlock, wanna... you wouldn't be able to open it from the backside, though. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, Layla, you can I are not going to really stick my finger selfie. in the lock and see if I can just open it? <laughs> Uh, if you don't have thieves tools or anything like that, it's it's far too small. Yeah. Can I okay. stick a crossbow bolt in the lock? Forgery kit and disguise kit. It's too big. Can I stick? You need like a lock picking set. Rapier in the lock? <clears throat> um, how Do high is it? You said it was a ten feet fence, ten foot tall fence. Yeah, the fence is about ten feet. The if lock I, is on the side with you, by the way. If I draped something over it. Like something heavy, like mm -hmm. a piece of leather. Can I scale the fence? Yeah, make an athletics check. Okay. So DC like ten. Yeah. So Kimbo just walks up and sort of jumps up and grabs the top of the fence and swings himself over and lands neatly on the other side. I'm gonna follow suit. You want to make an athletics check? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over also, I guess. I don't know. Does anybody need help yeah. getting over the fence? Does anybody want me? Layla climbs it without any issue. If anybody needs help climbing the fence, they're welcome to try and scale me. <laughs> Kurt. Oh. Kurt climbs it without issue. Yeah, you're almost as tall as the fence. <laughs> yeah, I just have to. Oh, also, Jennifer, if you if you click on your token, you see mm -hmm. the the little circles that pop up. Yeah. The green one is your armor class, and the red one is your hit points. Oh, sweet. Okay. And if you type into it, like if you type, you click on the, the red one and type like minus two, it'll yeah. subtract two hit points for you. It'll do math for you. Wow. And it That's updates cool. on your character sheet like automatically. That's awesome. Thank you. I would yeah. not have known that. Okay. Chris jumps over the, sh yeah, so you guys are having no issues climbing over the fence. Yeah, you saw two characters on the other side. Yeah. I would like yeah. three cards. <laughs> Make your athletic check. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> I, I think maybe Kelleric gives you a boost. Like, you start to slide off, and Kelleric comes up and just pushes. <laughs> pushes you on the button, like... So you kind of ungracefully flop over onto the other side into the stone yard. It knocks the wind out of you a little bit, but you make it over. Sorry. Oh, I did it! <laughs> mm -hmm. It was all me! <laughs> yes. I and, didn't need any help at all. And, and, and I, I just leave the Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you guys... Yeah, no problem. Are you guys trying to be particularly <laughs> quiet as you're climbing over the fence, or are you just yes. like, let's move into this? Nah, I okay, just went so... over. I would like to try to be stealthy. Okay. Yeah. So Layla is not very stealthy. I <laughs> you guys, despite your best efforts, make a fair bit of noise jumping, climbing over the fence, especially when uh, Pupa smashes into the rock and knocks the breath out of him. <laughs> I think. Oh dear. Layla, Layla, and Kaelic both like loudly gasp like, <laughs> at that moment, and when he gets up over the, you know, there's that moment of worry. But the the rest of you are fairly quiet. But if there was anybody inside, they were probably alerted to your presence. Uh oh. Oh shit! I'm sorry, guys. I mean, I rolled a six, so. <laughs> yeah. It's not just you, buddy. I tried to be. Well, Sarah, am I gonna have to carry Blood. you? Uh, perhaps. Okay, I want to start going and looking at this door. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is a window. Lizard. Oh, it's a window. You can actually it's see a... into that. Mm -hmm. Oh, what? Here? What is that? Is so it through the window when you peer in, yeah, you can see like crates and boxes stacked up. Um, it, it looks like a warehouse. There's a couple of like chairs and a desk off in one corner, um, and just stuff sort of tossed about. Yeah, it looks like storage. It looks like a, a warehouse, like maybe stuff brought in off ships. Is there anybody in there that we can see? Not that you see. Mm. Hmm. Can I listen in? Like against the window or against the wall? Yeah. Um, boop, 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 boop. boop. Don't hear anything. Wait, so what's over here? 
That is like a, a loading bay door, like a, a huge like loading bay door, and then there's a smaller door uh, further to the south. Hmm. I'm gonna go check the door to the south. Oh, okay. Doop, 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 doop. Um, can you pop over the bus? Oh, yeah. Put that on the ground. It's so weird to see the light shifts. It's kind of neat. It's cool, right? Ooh. I want to move Ming myself over, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, is this one? Yeah, that's me. Here comes Peapock. Let's see. Clack down the track. <laughs> lots and lots of Peapock. Oh. Miggy. Oh. Don't do oh, that. Oh, I'd like to make... I'd like to make a... Can, I, can we actually see what's on the floor? Is that just part of the map design? Where? Like all like these the little pattern shapes on the floor over there. That, oh, that's 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 nothing. Yeah, that's just some embellishment on the map. Okay, it's cool. It's pretty. <laughs> yep. So you move down to the door and give it a check. Like you you rattle it and it's locked. Oh. Hmm. Can I knock? Yeah, you walk up the door and you knock. Boom, boom, boom. There's no response. <laughs> Avon calling. Yeah. I have you heard of a good word. Oh my god. I want to open the door now. No, nobody comes to open the door though. There's you hear it echo through the the warehouse on the other side, but you don't. You don't. Nobody comes and opens the door. There's no voice calling from the other side. I kick the door in. You want to kid just kick it in? Is this like a garage door, this big thing? Yeah, it's like a loading door to move like heavy, ob like big stuff in and out. Is there like a thing so, to lift it, per chance? Uh, probably on the inside. Break the door. <laughs> well, I mean, okay. Layla's rearing back with her boot. She kicks the door and just yeah. poof, bounces off of it. It's like a security oh. door. It it seems fairly sturdy. So you kick it and your your foot ricochets back. You, you, the door doesn't budge and you kind of get shoved back a bit. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're being quiet. Nah. Not anymore. Not anymore. Since we're not, I'm just going to have it go in. <laughs> it, it rattles in the hinges. Uh, it doesn't splinter and come flying off, Dang. but it, it opens, up, it opens it up enough that you could push it through. Like it, it, the the frame where it locks in cracks enough that you can shove it the rest of the way open. Uh, I can do that. Just if you don't. It. Yeah, I, I rolled for my. Did you just okay. smash yeah, that shit in two? The door, the door comes crashing open and it opens into the warehouse. Do you turn uh, it into one of those doors that you see in like nurseries where there's a half door and a sec like that's in two pieces? <laughs> so, Peepaw, to be clear, you don't have dark vision, so you can't see for shit. I don't do you either. I don't We're both blind. <clears throat> you also can't see for shit. I'm gonna go stand behind these boxes. We need to get you okay, so Cassie, Cassie casts see. light, so you can you can see well enough. Um, like if you click on your token and then is it Shift T? Yeah. No, did they change it? What is it? I think it's space bar key. Is it? Sh it used to be shift T. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. They would change it to just the perspective of your character. Okay, so you guys begin coming in. Uh, I almost said Casty. Layla casts light um, and begins walking forward to give you guys some some sight. And um, we're gonna roll initiative. Oh yes. Knock knock. Oh, that's like static. So I will explain. Make sure you click on your token before you roll initiative. Oh. And then, so Jen, if you click on your token, then open your character sheet and click on the word initiative, it will roll it for you and it will add it to the turn tracker. Click on token. Oh, click off of it. There we go. Oh, okay. And then click initiative. <laughs> and then that's the initiative tracker. Oh, cool. Oh, how convenient. They rolled very high. Uh, no, not fog of war. Oh, damn, Chris and Kimbo rolling real high. Who am I missing? 
think that was Peepaw. Uh, turn order. So I got Peepaw. I do not have Kurt. I got you, Kurt. Nice. You rolled a four. <laughs> Okay. See, this is one of those moments where it's a cool thing I can do on roll 20. Oh, man. Oop, man. Yeah, see those now? <laughs> so, from up behind the boxes and crates um, come these is, squawking. Is the list? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Five. Okay. Yeah, she rolled a five. Uh, come these squawking, uh, sharp-beaked, uh, sort of semi-humanoid-looking bird creatures. They look like crows, um, but they're bipedal. They have short, stubby wings that end in little hands, and they each have a uh, short bow, and they pop up from behind stuff, squawk at you, ah! and then shoot arrows at you. Um, so they're going to shoot at two at Chris and, and two at um, Timbo. And does a 19 hit you, Kimbo? Uh, I think so. Yeah. My AC is uh, 13, so yeah. Your AC is only 13? What kind of armor do you wear? Leather. Okay, that's probably why. Yeah. Let me make sure it's right. And yeah, it's right. Okay, uh, so you will take five points of piercing damage. Dang. And then a second one shoots at you. A uh, 10. So you, the first arrow catches you by surprise and it thuds into your thigh. <laughs> Not the first time you've been shot. Uh, so there, there's that gritting of pain as you rip the arrow out of your leg. But now you know it's there. And as the second arrow comes whizzing by, you drop down low enough that it flicks over your head. Mm. And then Chris, uh, 16 to hit. Uh, 17. Okay, so it pings off of your armor. Uh, second roll is a 22. Yeah, you rolled it. So, six points of piercing damage. So, one of them tink, hit, hit, like shatters across your armor. And as you turn to face where that arrow comes from, another one comes flying out and sticks heavily into like it up into the armpit. It doesn't bite in deep enough through your armor to really cause massive damage, but it is uncomfortable. And then we will drop into initiative. And it's Chris. It's Chris, you get to go first. Oh, that really hurt, man. I'm gonna. So let me let me read the description of the room really quick. Uh, tables and chairs have been carelessly cut, tossed across the floor. The corpses of about a dozen men lie along the walls. Their rapiers and daggers lying nearby. On the north side of the area is a set of stairs that rise to an open level above. There are four short avian creatures with long beaks and black feathers that look at you in surprise where they stand in the middle of the warehouse. Each wears a hooded cloak and wields a, a short sword and a shofar. Yep, do you think, Chris? Okay, I'm gonna... I wanna unhide my rolls. Dab, dab. Uh, oh, God. Uh, uh, a 10 and 11? Nope, it's like quicker, and because it, it's only like four feet tall. Uh, it sort of shrinks back quickly and squawks and flaps its wings to get extra momentum and moves back away from you. Well, um, is that your turn? Uh, okay. Yeah, that's all I got. All right, Kimbo. Bye. Okay, I'm gonna Bye. go and shoot the thing that shot me or hit the thing that shot me. Sorry, I'm not gonna don't shoot. Um, Try to get with the kill stat. I was gonna war pick it to the face. Okay. And uh, what fighting style did you pick? Uh, I don't get one yet, right? Because we're level one. You get we one get at level fighting. one. I think it's it's. I think it's on your character sheet. It probably is. I yeah, just... dueling plus two to damage when wielding a uh, one-handed weapon. Yeah. So let me. That's right. I'll put it. I'll correct it so it'll auto roll damage for you. Plus Thank you. Two. No, not plus eight. I mean, if so, you if you click on the, that, I'm not going to tell you no. <laughs> Um, 
Same thing with the rapier, plus an additional two. Does okay, so if you click a... on the name of the weapon, um, mm -hmm. you see where it says attacks and spell casting? If you click yeah. on it, it will roll the attack in the I roll 20. It lets you, like... Okay, 13 hits. And then if you click on war pick in the chat log, it'll roll damage. War pick in the chat log. Oh, right here. Okay. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, that's so cool. six points of damage. Okay. So uh, it Chris comes up, flurries two quick strikes, it shrinks away, and as it moves back in, trying to drop its bow and draw its short sword, you take that moment to step forward and bury your pick into it. You feel it crack into light avian bones. The pick doesn't bury the the actual point, but you catch it hard enough that the impact of it snaps something, and you, it bounces off the wall and begins to lip and paint it, squawking at its compatriots. We're having chicken um, for dinner tonight, guys. No, this king who is going to disengage, <laughs> so he's going to use this turn to just run the fuck away, and the other three will continue hailing you with arrows. So, uh, so the first shot will go at Chris. Ten doesn't hit. Nope. Second shot will go at Kimbo. Mm. Eight. Uh, third shot will go toward Curtis. Oh no. Twenty-four to hit. Oh yeah. So six points of piercing damage. So as you come running into the room, you see these bird things pop up. You see your two like he uh, heavier and stronger friends rush into melee, and then all of a sudden there's just an arrow buried into your arm. It catches you just above the bicep and like sticks out Ugh. of the side. Uh, it's a very unpleasant wound, um, which makes it Kelric's turn. Um, good to mm. chat there. Uh. Okay, uh, he's going to move into the space. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, actually, I can move through friendly spaces, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to take cover behind these boxes. And since I can't do them, much for me, I'm going to uh, cure wounds on, on Kimbo. Okay. So click on the spell on your spell sheet, and it should give us the hit point. Move it to the right, get to here, and then move it to the left. Um, can uh, what, what's do they have a health bar? Very good. Yeah. Okay, I I just can't see it. I'm assuming it's fine. Good. I know. I mean, I hit the one on the far right for pretty hard and it's still standing so that's the only one that's been hit so far no i i don't mean the enemy i mean on our i can't oh you can't see everybody's little yeah, red I, I can't see kurt's health bar oh i can't see his health bar either actually uh for everybody else i can see it i will uh, tell you then kurt has three hit points did i get hit by oh. this thing Oh, okay. Actually, no, then you just oh, no. you did it wrong because you got hit for six, and for some reason you only took three hit points off your character. Oh. Okay, I so if, I, I'm gonna fix this one then. I I I I was like, ah, oh, it's fine, right? But no, he looks worse off than the other two, so I'm gonna heal him. Um. Okay, you are back up to full. Yeah. So you can't go over your total, so you're just back at nine. All right. Okay. okay. So you move up, you heal Curtis, he, the, you pull the arrow out, and Curtis, you feel like the itching sensation is the healing magic um, goes over you. It, it scabs over, uh, and you are, are whole once again, which makes it Peepaw's turn. Why are we fighting lovely. for Thank people? Because they fought They're just us. squawking at you and, like, getting ready to shoot more arrows. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. shooting at us. Probably breaking it. Anyway. How do they have thumbs to pull arrows? Because they're bird people. They have hands. Oh. This is uh, on the paper. Let me see if I can. Here, hang on. Hi, Moogie. Oh, I, uh, I'm trying to do a check. Sorry, I, I quit saying. There you go. They look like this. Oh. Uh, oh. Wow, they hate babies. I mean, they don't have to, but. 
<laughs> anyway, um, he, Buster is gonna try to do a chill touch on one of the Kenku. Okay, can you ping which one? Oh, uh, where's yours? This one? Yeah, that's me, so the closest one. Yeah, just click, click and hold on which one you wanna chill touch. Yeah, I don't want to be right next to him though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you I don't have, have you don't have to move. You've got a, you've got 120 feet, so you can hit any of them from where you're standing. Okay. I just need to know which one. So just click and hold on the one you want to hit. That one. Okay. So go ahead and click uh, chill touch in the chat because uh, you definitely hit. So for oh. six necrotic damage, and his Yay. movement speed is halved or something, right? Uh, nah, 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 nah. Until then, the target hit clings to the hand. If you okay, on a hit, you can't regain hit points until the start of its next your next turn. Yay. Okay. Yeah. So the the ghostly like uh like writhing wolf's paw reaches out and swipes through this thing. You see it shudder as ice tinkles across its like a uh, feathery hide, uh, and it squawks in anger and pain. Uh. Layla. Uh, your spells. Here's your spells. Layla's gonna cast healing word on Chris. Is that the one that's far right? Yep. Thank okay. you, my child. So you get six hit points back, Chris. Thank you. I'm back up to full. And then she's gonna step out of the room. <laughs> she's back back out. Oof. Yeah, and to the side. Oof, like that? Yep. Okay, so she's just like, you got this, and then just walks back out of the room. <laughs> but you feel Aww. like the word that, that you got this, you're bolstered by that. Uh, and you feel the, the wound you suffered in the armpit begin to heal. Fuck the shit I'm out. Um, which makes it Curtis's turn. All right. Uh, I think I'm just going to move my feet. Okay. Okay, it's just your movement. You still have your action and your bonus action. I think I think it'll just hold action for now. Uh, what's the trigger? What action are you holding, and, and what what's gonna trigger it? Well, actually, can I just like prepare to do my sleep spell? But I'm gonna move my next turn. Right now, I'm just waiting. I want to get closer to him. Okay, uh, Chris, it's your turn again, then. It's me. I'm gonna. <laughs> Uh, what? No, wait. Oh, uh, when I'm doing this, I do that. I'm gonna scoot on up to this guy. <laughs> you get uh, I think you're. Do you have forty? For uh, was it too far? Yeah, you, I think it's like one foot too far. Uh, or one square too far. Yeah, what? it's one square too far. Oh. Well, if you go that way, if you just go straight that way, you can do it. Yeah, that's fine. Can I not? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. no, you can do that. I'm just going to go straight, straight through. Yep. Okay. You're good. Um, I'm going to do a little bit. Oh, shit. Uh, roll damage for the first one. So eight. Okay. The first one kills it. Oh, okay. So you you rush forward and you just like shoulder into this thing and stab in with one of your two rapiers. It sinks down to the hilt. It squawks angrily one last time and then goes limp on the end of your blade. You kind of have to shake it off. Uh, oh, is that your turn? You just want to run forward and stab that thing? Um, can I, I don't think I have enough movement to get to the neck. Oh, do you I? do? Can I? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You move twenty to there and then it's ten that way. So you can use the second attack. Yeah. Okay. Mm, that one's still up. So it, it dodges away out of the worst of the blow. You scrape across its like beak. It would have stabbed it in the face were it a human, but it scrapes across its beak and like sn- snags across the side of its face, opens a big bleeding wound on its face. 
Um, you can see, like, even even though they're not humanoid, or they're humanoid, but even though they're not human, they, they don't have normal human features, you can see panic starting to set into their eyes, uh, which makes it Kimbo's turn. Kimbo, you're fighting monsters. Yeah, I know. I'm excited. I've been waiting for this. This is the thing um, you wanted to do. Yeah. So uh, I don't think I can make it all the way, so I'm going to whip out my crossbow and try to hit... Uh, let's see. Uh, it's exactly 30 feet to this guy. Uh, can I, if I move so a little closer, get... I can hit it? You can, you can just walk up, you can run up to him. Oh, okay. Uh, ah, so no, you, you can get to here. going through walls, okay. <laughs> don't, don't do that. There you go. <laughs> okay. Let me and turn your tokens, you're pointing at the guy. Thank you. So you, sir. Hit him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With my Susie, how many spell slots do you have? Four pick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hit. A 19 definitely hits. Yeah. Cool. Hit him again. Okay, so there's that moment of panic as it its face gets nicked by Chris, and then it turns like as if to flee. It's beginning to try to run away, and uh, Kimbo just rushes up and thunk, the war pick plants heavy on top of the thing's head. Um, and you have to wrench it back out of its skull, which is less difficult because it has it has like thinner, lighter bones. You can like feel it, the pick sink in easier than normal. And I think you, I definitely pff, stick my skull. boot into his chest to pull it out, though. <laughs> you remember the <laughs> wrenching it out? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other two kinku are just gonna use their turn to try to run upstairs. So. Hey guys, hey. I think I just found out there's some stairs here. <laughs> so that one disappears from sight. <laughs> I just have this feeling. And that one disappears from sight. Oh, no. So they run right. up the stairs. Oh, oh, here. Down. Go there. There. Okay. On um, Kelric. Um. So what was light cast on? Uh, do you not have dark vision? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, I don't think fur bulks have dark vision. So uh, it's something that Layla is carrying, and she disappeared out of the room. Mm. Oh. So okay. you're standing uh, in darkness right now. So I'm going to cast Produce Flame. And just okay. use it as a light source. <laughs> uh, that gives me light for 10 feet and the dim light for 10 extra. Okay. Can you see? Like, you can actually see right now that there's other people in the room, right? Uh, I, yeah, I can, I can see through everybody else's characters, but I don't, okay. I don't know if I proper can see, so that's what I'm doing. Yeah, so you, you can if you cast Produce Flame, so. Yeah, you have low light vision yeah. and dark vision. Okay, you have dark vision, according oh, to Susie. Cool. Yay! <laughs> um, so you're gonna set these boxes on fire? No, that's that that is not a good idea. You must toast food with it. Control L. Well, there's two foods right here. <gasps> yeah, if you click on your token to hit Control L, it'll show you exactly what your token can see. Can uh, I, that does not work for me. I can see oh, like a, I can see me. a little five foot circle just around me. Yeah, that's that's all you can see. Well, that's uh, well, she has she has dark vision. You said, Bonnie? Susie? Yeah, you mm -hmm. got it. Okay, there you go. I fixed your dark vision. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, then I will. I will move in this this direction. Yeah, that seems okay. like a good place for me to take it anyway. Yeah, and there's there's a bunch of like barrels and and turned over shit blocking your path right here. Okay. Um, Just say no. Okay. Well, I I could I can't see like this little section right here, so I, I was like, well, maybe there's a yeah. direction that way. So I this fine. I mean, you can move through it. It's just like difficult terrain. That's uh, fine. Buster. Oh. oh, sorry. Um, so are they're not in view anymore, are they? Yeah, they ran off. Somewhere. No, they fled. 
And you cannot see right now, you're in the dark. Yeah, you're in the dark. I'm in the dark. There is only darkness. Hello, oh, darkness, my old friend. Because, uh... The sound of my voice. So, um, is there a way that Buster can... Sorry, go ahead. You can hold okay. your turn until Layla comes back into the room. I'll, I'll stay by the light. I'll be like, uh, Okay. Nightbringer. Yeah, because right now you can't see shit. Oh, Hana means okay. no one gets left behind. <laughs> Alright, no, Layla. You can hear your friend shouting to bring the light back into the room. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. The light tower. The sun. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm going to run into the room. And I'm going to run up to the people that I can see as far yes. as I can go. 5, 10. Hello. Oh, I'm going toward the other people. This way? Yeah. Okay. You can get to there. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Curtis. Can I double move? Yeah, yeah. You want to dash? Yeah. Which way do you want to go? Uh, up to Chris. <sighs> you have 15 feet of movement left. Um, I don't... You're going to stay where you are? See anybody? So I'll just... Past them okay. and be like, which way? I guess there's only one way. You can get there, and then you <laughs> from here you can from here you can see the stairs. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Curtis. I'm just moving. Five. Oh, oh wait. Did five. Buster want to move? Um, Buster said he was just gonna wait for you. Oh. I went. Uh, you're standing on top of yeah. There you go. Okay, uh, Chris. It's your turn. Is uh, is Buster gonna go catch up with Light Lady? I want to, but I don't know if I can. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so Chris, you are just running blindly in the dark. Yeah, just. I'm just gonna, uh, I guess I'll, I don't know, like, I won't be able to see up the stairs, so, I'm just Yeah, right now you can only see because Layla's in the room. Yeah. Like, you can see the start of the stairs right here, but there's a wall on either side of them, you can't, you don't see where they go. Yeah, I'm just gonna, well, I guess I'll dash, and I'll just kind of, like, hang out right here. At the end okay. of the wall and like peek around it. Um so at this point shot. it'll be nobody's gonna get up the stairs before the Kinko's next turn, so we can go ahead and drop out of initiative. Cool. Oh, is the Kinku right in front of me who's dead have anything worth rummaging through the pockets for? Um he has a short bow and a short sword. Uh and he is wearing like rags basically and let me see you could do he has bits and scraps of food and like a collection of shiny buttons oh okay i'm just gonna uh, lay it out next to him it. then and call it good oop sorry why okay. will it not why i don't i'm sorry i don't want to travel stop going through the walls i don't want to do that i wish i could just use let's see if i can make it so you can thank you I'm having a hard time grabbing uh, my little guy and moving him. You can actually movement. just use arrow keys. Can you I? You could be able to, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, while your token select. I will do that. Hey, then. Me. All right, so you guys, the kinku disappear. You hear uh, their footsteps echo upstairs for a few moments, and then nothing. It goes silent. Hmm. So you're down here. There are like half a dozen or so dead bodies strewn about. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh, on this floor, like, all pushed up against the wall. Oh, none of them are our friend, are they? Uh, none of them matches description. I'm assuming you guys are going to go, like, searching through them. Uh, mm -hmm. As you search through their pockets and things like that, you notice that several of them um, have uh, snake tattoos, winged snake tattoos. 
uh, I want to move this this Kinku's body over to lay next to right here. Because they're friends. Over to where? Oh, yeah. Group them up. Uh, you know, lay them out, all politeness and stuff. Yeah, apparently, Buster climbs up on top of a stack of crates. <laughs> they're cheating underneath him. I couldn't hear you. What did you say? You said you've climbed up onto a stack of crates. What? You have climbed onto a stack of crates. Oh. <laughs> Her so they're what sort of that? wobbling underneath you. Ah, so here you are. I am tall now. <laughs> I'm gonna go look at these um, people that are on the okay. wrong wall. Yeah, they're they've been stripped of any like anything they would have on them of value, but it it's a collection of men and women all rough looking, all with snake tattoos on their body somewhere. Like how dead are they? They're super dead. Like <laughs> probably a couple days ago. Like sticky. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't go that close. Uh is there anything of interest in any of the crates? Um Make an investigation check. Uh, I would also like to. Help. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> no, what? it's trade goods mostly, right. like stuff that's coming off ships and not really anything that's worth a lot of money. Um, there is so there's the stairs from here. There's the stairs leading up, and then underneath the stairs, there's a, a door. What? I want to go in the door. It's right here. Yeah, can I, I just open it? Want to go yeah, back. yeah. it's like a closet. Uh, let me open it for you. Mm. Yes, oh, it's, it's a, a lady! Uh, or a man. And, <laughs> it's, a, it's a dude. Uh, <laughs> it's a not so a lady! Oh, it's a lady there with a goatee! <laughs> it's a man. Uh, it's a goatee! He is a handsome looking man. Uh, he has long, uh, like auburnish colored hair and like a, a short little patch goatee. He's wearing clothes that used to be very, probably very fine, um, but at this point are not. Um, let's see here. I have a description of him somewhere. Uh, he is uh, marred by grime and the lingering stench of like pickled harem. Uh, he, uh, is got a gag in his mouth and is tied up and is just sort of shoved back into the corner. And when you open up the door, his eyes shoot open in a panic and he starts trying to, like, kick himself further back into the corner. He's very finely dressed, um, and, uh, but the, the clothes are tattered. Oh! Uh, I want to take his, my gaggy thing off his face. <laughs> hey, mm -hmm. yeah, he's, he's like, um... What does he say? Oh, oh, please, uh, no more. Uh, I, I told you, I don't know where my father hid it. You've clearly what? had too much herring. What you talking about? What's going on in here? He, he looks at you confused. I, who are you? You're, you're not... Who are you? Who are you? I'm Kimbo. Did, did my, I'm yeah, Kim, you... Kimbo and Layla, did, did, did my father send you then? You're not members of the Zent. Who's your father? Who's the Zent? He looks... He looks Kimbo? indignant at that. Kimbo, like, like father. when you're like, who's your father? He looks at you. No, that a lout is not my father. Please help. If you're not here to kill me or, or, or try to beat an ants out of me, please help me up. I've been locked in here for quite some time. And uh, Yeah, you smell like it. I, yes, I would appreciate being unbound. And then I will introduce myself. And when you said, who are you? Who's your father? He's like, oh, these people don't recognize me. Okay, I'm going to start helping him get some semblance of... Um, yeah, so as you're starting to help him up, he's like, no, uh, my name guy. is Rainier. Rainier, never remember. I'm My father was daggled, never remember. Oh, yeah. The, the former open lord of, of Waterdeep. Hmm. Doesn't yeah. ring any bells. With the bard. Yeah, from anybody in Waterdeep, it does. He, he's like, I, I believe these Zens kidnapped me to... A deposit a ransom or some such. Hmm. Have you seen Floon? Floon? Oh, not since last night. Oh, he was uh -huh. here. He's like, I'm tired. He's rubbing his wrist. He's like, oh, please, thank you. That was, this is quite kind of you. 
Um, we should hurry. I, I don't I don't know if this place is safe. Are there more of the Zins out there? Did you kill them? What are Zins? The Zintarum, my friend. Hmm? What? Bird people. Uh, no, we're the, not done the, with them the, yet. No, the, the Zintarum, the Black Network. Oh, you're good. The what? You, you, you're just doing that. this, and I don't get it. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, he's he's blinking at you, and he's um. You get this this sense where he's like um, he's getting this look where he's like um, uh, like all these poor fools. They don't know anything. And he has this look on his face, like how how dare you not know my name and what the things I speak of are? And he's like. So you're not just here to rescue me, then? You've come looking for Floon. Yeah. No. I'm sorry, I don't believe he's here. There was a ruckus. So it sounded like a fight. I haven't seen him. I, they locked me in here a, a night or two ago. I'm, I'm not sure. It's, so it's hard to tell time. Were the people here, you can people you considered friends at one point? Not just Floon. The others, I, I believe, like, like I said, they, they kidnapped me. I believe for a ransom. Insight check. I don't know if I believe him. Uh, inside. You're pretty good at this. You got an eight. Shouldn't have said anything. It's my fault. Uh, yeah. It, as far as you can tell, he's just yeah, a kidnap victim. He's just in a panic. Oh. Uh, come over here. I, well, I, you're you all crowded into the closet with me at this point. I, give the man yeah. some room. I think you guys let him out of the closet. I yeah. stay as I don't like this person. <laughs> I almost see your face. Yeah, you think I'm looking at him. He doesn't look too different from the description that Volo gave you of of Floon, but his hair is the wrong color. Hmm. Um, okay, so you're friends with Floon. Uh, yes. And you saw Fleur. We were drinking in an inn, um, a, some tavern that he met me in. Uh, the stabbed dragon, the murdered uh, dragon, I don't recall. No. And why were you guys yeah, slumming it? Yeah, he shrugs. Okay. It, it was Floon's idea. He, w he wanted to gamble, thought it would be easier pickings there. Yeah, by okay. easier pickings, you mean you can't win anything. <laughs> he shrugs. I, I honestly drank enough and, and since then have been in enough of a panic. I don't remember if I won. Looks yeah. like you did win. Mm. Mm. Well, you look like a mess. Well, so. Floon and I left there together and then uh, I heard a rustling and then I, I woke up here and I've been in that closet and, and I heard the sounds of a fight from inside the closet and then it's been quiet for the last few days except for the sounds of birds, I think. Hmm. Or how I how how long have I been yeah. in here? It's been Can like. Can I try to calm like, him down? Yeah, he's not like he's not like freaking out. He's just okay. He's not like well, having a panic attack or anything. Like we're not done here. There's still stuff to kill, and I'm going upstairs. So you can stay here, oh. or you can come with us. Oh, uh, very well. He starts looking around, and like you he'll wander over and pick up one of the. <laughs> he'll pick up. It's like literally laying inside the room. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he'll pick up one of the short swords that one of the uh, um, Kinku has, has dropped and he'll be like um, I'll stay in the back then mm -hmm. that's a that's good awesome. idea I spray him with some perfume yeah because he, smell he smells like pickled fish and piss <laughs> <laughs> did you push yourself dear lady I've been locked in a closet for I don't know how long I treated very poorly do the kinku have cloaks? Or are they in uh, rags? They're, they're wearing, like, uh, the semblance of clothing. Well, I just wonder if it, it would it, be better it, than what the guy's wearing to stick one of these kinku cloaks on him. Yeah, and <laughs> probably. And, yeah. As you start to head up the stairs, though, he's sort of following and jabbering. He's like, see, my, my father was a very important man. He, uh, <laughs> being the former oh, kid, open I don't give a shit about your father. I, yeah, we're looking we... for this floon guy. I feel a little bit quiet now. But I'm so, glad you're better. Let's okay. go. And he's like, what if what if they took me and Floon because they thought he was trying to... Okay. <laughs> it's okay. You guys are going to start heading up the stairs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'll be like, and if your okay, right. dad really is that guy, he can pay us a ransom. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks at you and he's like, 
now you're kidnapping me. No. <laughs> no. Oh, you're bringing you back I my kiss to your family cheek. for a fee. <laughs> for the fee for our escort services. So, Kimbo, you're just walking up the stairs? Yeah, it's probably a dumb idea, but I want to uh, All right, I'm going to move you. you. Right, hang on. I'm going to put you up the stairs. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stick yeah. by Renee. Okay, he's he's waiting for like he's waiting for everybody else. Yeah. I'll go in front of him. Okay, so everybody heads up the stairs. Yeah, I don't feel at a hundred percent, but I'm not too worried about it right now. He'll, he'll I will move ahead. you all up the stairs. Yay! There we go. So the next floor, uh, it, it opens up. There's a balcony um, where you can look down, but you can't see up. Oddly. Um, that is opened up to the level below where it's stacked with crates on the, in the main warehouse. Um, in the crates, when you were ser searching through, you found moth-eaten bolts of cloth, bottle, uh, spoiled bottles of, uh, with olive oil, uh, 127 pairs of wooden sandals um, that were very popular last year but are not popular any longer. Um, and just none of it's worth money. It's all, it's all just junk. Be the equivalent of finding a box of. That's just junk. And you want to move up to the second floor. Uh, what's on the next floor? Okay, there's a another like what looks like a small office off the left. This is probably a place where goods were checked in and paperwork was kept. There's some more storage. Uh, and this is the balcony that looks down on the floor below. Where you're standing now. Oh, okay. So you may explore as you see fit. This is a really big balcony for there to be nothing on. It's it's like it's actually like closed off. Like it's the five foot square like here. Like around the edges. Okay. Like, yeah, like there's a walkway like this. Oh, I see. So, yeah, whatever you guys want to do now. Uh, Probably play for like another 15, 20 minutes. Okay. I think I want to go in this place. Okay. It's just, just more storagey things. Yeah, it's it's more storage. Hey guys, I think we gotta jump a box if we wanna go to the right. You can just squeeze through. Oh, like walk sideways? Okay. Yeah. I think we need to go this way. There's a door here. And my dog needs out. Uh, and then a long, like, uh, stretching, like, cordoned off area that's, that's more storage. Uh, just more odds and ends and bits and junk. Uh, this thing that you guys are all looking at is like a crane. It's used for picking up big, heavy objects and moving it around the warehouse. Like what's his nuts as ego? Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, big crane. Um, let's check the door for floons. I think... I love seeing everyone move around. Urchin. Uh huh. Just calling his name. There's uh, nothing interesting back that way. Oh, <laughs> Are you here? Somebody want to no. open that door? No. No? What do you mean, no? I don't open doors. Oh, yeah, you don't. I'll smash door open. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> you guys want to. He has throw that. So this door gets kicked in or smashed open. Uh, a rat is skittering around in a panic on the other side of the room. It looks like a small office. Um, there's a table, like a writing table, no papers, or um, um, like one piece of paper folded up into like an origami shaped bird uh, sitting on the, the table. And then the rat skitters out onto a balcony that opens out into the street and then like crawls down a drain pipe. Um, yeah. 
I know where you are. Yeah. Yeah. So that opens back out onto the, the balcony. I'm sorry. I thought there was an actual balcony. <laughs> no, it just opens back out, basically onto the street. Okay. Uh, and that door was open when you came in. Oh. And then there's another closed door here. Perhaps that's where the key slid out. There aren't in here. Yeah, the only thing remarkable in the whole place is this little paper, paper bird on the table. Do you want to go through the door? Can I unfold the bird? Can uh, I identify uh, the bird? You, when you reach down to pick it up, it, it like wiggles in your hand like the wings try to flap. Ooh. Uh, can I, like, grab it like that? <laughs> I can't see you, but I'm assuming oh. you're trying to, like, cup it? Yeah. yeah. Not crush it? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wait, what is it? It's a bird. Paper bird. Oh. Does it look it's like a, little, a like, specific bird? Crane. It's like a little paper crane. Okay. Ooh, are there uh, more rats? Can I put it in my, yeah. like, put it in something and not crush it, like, a pocket? Yeah, if you want. I mean, there's, yeah, there's rats as you guys are opening up the doors and exploring the offices. They're they're fairly unremarkable and, and similar, can um, I, like, and there are rats the rat? skittering around. And can I offer, you want to kill like, them? No, I want to, I want to offer them. I thought you said food. stomp. No, I want to offer them the food uh, that was on the dead king. Make an animal <laughs> handling check? No. Okay, uh, they, 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 like, one of them disappears into a hole, the other one runs into another room. You can hear more of them, like, in the wall, like, skittering about. Oh. I... I just wanna, I'm just gonna, like, leave the food, like, in, like, a little corner. Um. That yeah, little rat head pokes out of a hole and pulls it back into the hole with it. Yeah. Aw. I just don't want it to go to waste. That, that guy's dead. He's not gonna eat it all. There's a lot of little tiny rooms back in here. Yeah, they're all little like offices. Oh. Mm. Yep. Hello. Um, can I try? Oh. Can I talk to a rat and try and convince it to help us find the person if they've seen him? Uh, they can't answer you. Like, they can understand you, but you can't understand them. But you can make an animal handling check. Yeah, like for leading and then promising at the end. And bringing sure. you back here once we're done. Yeah, yeah, make your animal handling check. Because that would be really mean, like, okay, thanks, bye! Where am I? <laughs> Okay. Um, the rat squeaks at you, like, angrily, and then skitters away as quickly as possible. I, I, have, a, I have advantage on those. Do you? Yeah, I have advantage okay. on charisma checks for influencing um, those. Okay, then it, it, like, it, like, skitters back out of the room runs and runs back down toward the stairs. I will follow it. Okay. And it runs into, like, the center of the warehouse room and, like, sort of does a circle a couple times. And then, like, runs up to one of the dead bodies and, and like, uh, like, claws at its foot. And then, like, looks back up at you expectantly. Oh, remember Meanwhile, me. Chris has jumped off the balcony and is running around on the streets outside. <laughs> I'm gonna take off the shoe. Because it's scratching at its foot. Okay, yeah, it's just a boot. Like, there's nothing in it. Um, it just ran, it just ran back downstairs. No, I, I, like the shoe of the dead guy that it scratched at and looked at me expectantly for? Yeah, there's nothing in its boot. It's just a stinky foot. Oh. oh. He, he betrayed you. Um, he I'll investigate the body then. Uh, it's, yeah, there's there's nothing else like on any of the bodies. It's it just the rat led you back down to the dead bodies when you asked about a guy. That was like, this is, it just ran down there. This is a guy. There's a guy. Oh. This is a guy. Yeah, I'll, put down a, I'll put down a small amount of food and back upstairs. Yeah, it scares off with the food and disappears into one of the crates. Aww. 
I think I'm gonna go out on that balcony. Okay. The outside one. Okay. No, not that way. Oh, out here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here, I will I will draw the balcony so you guys have an idea of there. Yeah, like that. Jumping off over Can there. Jason fly? Jason. Nope. Jason. <laughs> Jason. I see the evidence that something jumped down. Um, I mean, it's only like 10 feet up off the ground, so it would be fairly easy to jump down. Yeah, but are there like the prints or feathers? Uh, uh, not that you can see. Okay, I'm going to hop down. Okay, you splat down onto the street below. Um, and then I'm going to have you make a perception check. Okay, you can hear out in front of the building. Like, um, this way. Like, uh, that's the wrong thing. I want the ruler. Uh, like, this way, out toward the front of the building, you can hear, like, movement. You hear like the sound of like heavy footfalls and metal clanging around coming down the street. Hmm. That's out of sight. I go, Jesus, it's the cops. <laughs> um, I'm gonna dart around the corner. Which way? The opposite direction. The opposite direction. So you go around the back of the building. Yeah. Oops. I keep hitting the back button on your mouse because it's in a weird place and it's very soft. All right, so you begin to bolt. Uh, are you trying to be stealthy as you go? I assume. Uh, yeah. What kind of armor do you wear? Um, I think chain. I think you have disadvantage then. Oh, I'm gonna go slow. I'm just gonna be like. You, you still have disadvantage. Doesn't matter. Um, you run around the corner, and as you do, you can see like a head stick its way around the corner. Is it here's the banging, and it looks at all your friends standing on the balcony. And uh, the voice of like a male guard calls out as he's looking around the corner at you. You can see he's like big helmet, and he's like, uh, Captain Staggett, I believe I found the cause of our ruckus. Like, just as you're turning the corner. Uh -oh. run. Jesus. And then as you start to run, he's like, you there, halt, no, don't, there's no need to be, and then you just pff, bolt. Yep, fucking go. Okay, so uh, Layla bolts, she flees, and then you guys can all hear uh, footsteps, like people coming into the, uh, to the uh, thing down, uh, the warehouse down below. I'm going to stick my head yeah. in the building uh, and go, I think we're going to need what's in What? Your volume? vocals went out. What? Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, I said you think we're gonna need... <laughs> What's his nuts? Look, why don't we just tell him, like, hey, we came to rescue this guy, and we did, and here he is, and he can co corroborate yeah, this. Yeah, he'll set our name straight. Yeah. Because otherwise this does not look good. So, Layla, you bolt around the corner to the south, and as you turn the corner, you can see at the other end of the building, there are guards posted. So you turn the corner and they're standing there like like I, at attention waiting and they see you. And you see as them. I turn the corner like really fast. I just start walking. You just casually walk up to them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then you you all hear a voice of a uh, like a a blustery I did it again. A blustery male voice uh uh on the floor below you like call out like um like you hear him like tut like and then he hears out if there's anyone left alive here, I would appreciate it if you would come down the stairs. No, we're dead. Gladly. <laughs> come on, friendo, let's go downstairs. Well, if there's any dead people that could answer my questions, I would appreciate it if you would come down the stairs. <laughs> That's the best response to that. I'm gonna go. Sorry, I'll no. move you guys. I'll, nice. I'll move you guys down the stairs, like so that it's not a claustrophobic. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. And these two. Pops down. I'm too and apparently my drawing and this wrap. Oh. No. Eh. And as you come over the balcony and then come down the stairs, 
you see standing in the middle of the room, sort of looking down at the bodies, um, sort of a, a heavy set fellow. Um, yeah, some of you recognize him as the guy that was questioning the uh, the surviving members of the uh, of the scuffle that you had walked across. Oh, the gang people. Uh, yeah, uh, he's like a. Do I have art for him? Veterans. I don't. Um, so, but he's he's more heavily armored than the other. Uh, guards. He's um, like sort of a chunky dude. And he's wearing a heavy like cloak over the top of his armor. And he's like looking down at the bodies. He's looking over at these kinku. He looks up at you as you come down the stairs. And Rainier comes down and he's like, he looks at Rainier and he's like, Lord Never Ember, uh, what are you doing here? And, and uh, Rainier is like, oh, it has been quite harrowing, good captain. I have been kidnapped and beaten and thrown in a closet. And, uh, and he like holds up his hand and he's like, this can uh, stagnate. The guy goes, could, could anybody explain these bodies to me then? Perhaps an explanation is in hand here. It seems we have several dead members of the Zent, a, a few Kinku. Um, uh, it, it, perhaps one of you could fill me in on what's going on. We can explain two. <laughs> I hope that's enough. He looks at you. Two, two of my questions, I... I which two? Two bodies. Oh, well, perhaps you should come over here and, and explain then. And uh, Layla, you're just going to walk up to these guards? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so you walk up to them, and they, they're sort of standing at attention, and they're like... Fucking oh. rats up there! <laughs> Jesus! As hard as you begin to shout, and they're like... Uh, yeah, the city, it has something of a, a rat problem in the Dark Ward. Who are you? I am Layla, at your service. We're here responding to a, a noise complaint or something of the such. It, Captain Staggett is inside. You'll want to speak to him. He motions you toward the door. Okay. And they've unlocked the gate somehow. And you can see more guards inside the, the gate, like, watching. You're just going to head inside? Yeah. So you walk inside, and you see the heavier set, like, heavy armored figure, and he looks over it, and he goes, Oh, good lord, there's more of them. Okay, well, explain the two things that you can explain, then. Well, we came in here looking for our friend, Balloon, and some kinkers shot at us, so we smashed them, and then we found this guy. And he looks over at Never Ember, and Never Ember's like, oh, I, I don't believe they were here to rescue me. They were looking for my friend, Floon Blagmar. Um, he was kidnapped with me, but I, I don't know where he's gone. We couldn't find him, but there are hell of rats up there. <laughs> the, the stag is looking back and forth, and he's like, you're, you're adventurers, aren't you? A lot of you, adventurers. I wouldn't call me that, no. but these people need healing, so I'm right here. He sort of nods, and, and someone hired you to look for this floon, and you came in here, and there were bodies. And these bird people seem to have moved in, and, and you rescued this gentleman. Yes. Yep. And Never was like, it's all true, all, all perfectly true. And um, St Staggett sort of nodding. It was like, you can't see his face past this coif. It like covers up the bottom half of his face. So is it sort of echoey tone? And he's like, uh, OK, well, let me explain something then. This is water deep. And we have laws. And if you could allow the keeping of those laws to be done by the watch, the watch would be very appreciative. And he holds up a finger and then starts to dig into a bag. And um, you're the closest one to him, um, Layla. So he pulls out like a rolled up piece of parchment and holds it out to you. And he's going to give you this. Am I getting served? Nope. <laughs> uh, he it, you unfold it, and it's a piece of paper that has a, a list of, like, basic, like, crimes and the punishments that go along with them. So we're getting like, warnings, some basically. Of you, <laughs> some of you may be new to the city, but um, the, it, we don't look down on this sort of activity, the adventuring sort, but as far as law enforcement, such as rescuing people who have been kidnapped, 
generally you report that sort of thing to the watch. Okay, well this guy, he's really fancy, very handsome, with black hair, is missing. And he looks down at the dead bodies, and he, <laughs> and he looks back up at you, and he, <laughs> yeah, he, he's like, well, I appreciate the report. Kidnapped by the Zens, then. Um, yes, I think. And Maybe. since then, all of these Zens have been killed and taken somewhere else. Oh, this is not their place? This would be in, this, this warehouse you see is probably in control of the Zens until someone came in and murdered them all and took your friend Floon. Yeah. I let you in on a secret that's not really a secret. In fact, if you've been about in the city, you've probably seen the side effects of it. The Zins are new arrivals to our city, and they have come in and, and started someone of a, um, uh, something of a, a, a scuffle, if you will, with the local Xanathar guild. Are any of you aware of the things that I'm saying? Does any of this make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Are, some of you yeah. are nodding and some of you are like, what the fuck? And he's like, gang, gang folks. So I find generally when there are dead Zints, that was because the Xanathar was here. And generally when there are dead Xanathar, it's because the Zints were here. So your friend is probably in the possession of the Xanathar guild, which means he's probably no longer on the streets. And in Waterdeep, we keep the blood off the streets. Are we understood? Um, I do have one question. Uh, oh, yes, please. Um, so if we wanted to find this guy with the Xanathar, and it's not within your jurisdiction to go in and find them because that's private property, probably? He nods and he says, no, he's simply not on the streets anymore. The Xanathar so, operates underground. So, if we do all the things off the street, then it is okay. This <laughs> <laughs> uh, is the warehouse countess. So the mistake the was jumping off the balcony onto the street. If we stayed in the <laughs> building, we would have been you. fine. And, like, he puts his hand on his face. Like, he, like, you could tell he was, like, trying to give you a hint to, like, let you do your thing, but do it quietly somewhere else. And you're like, so does this count? And he's like, no, just if you are to do such activities as rescuing people, do not do it in such a public manner that people call me because someone has broken into a warehouse and I have to show up with 10 guards. Oh. Oh. I don't care about the dead Zents. I don't care about dead Xanathar. The more of them you kill, the better. But do it somewhere off. The streets, not on <laughs> the street. Apologies, yeah. You just want us to be he's quiet. Like, he's pointing down, like, is he saying this? Like, don't do it, do it somewhere else. And he's pointing mm-hmm. lower. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. and then he, he, Thank he you. starts patting himself, like, into all of his armor, and then he reaches into his bag again. Um, and he gives Layla, like, a card. And in a low voice, he's like, you seem like the least idiotic, so I'm going to give this to you. <laughs> <laughs> and he hands you a card. It just has his name and like the the what watch house he's a part of. So that way you, you could go like look for the watch house and find him. And he's like, if you have issues with the Xenathar, if you need help dealing with them, you come to speak to me first. We do things quietly. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Is he hot? Uh <laughs> no. Because, um... You gonna roll a D twelve for this one? Uh, I can, but like he's wearing a, a crap ton of armor. Let me see if I, um, I thought I had art for him, but I don't. Well, you know, if you roll a twelve, then that means that That's his plates eight. are actually going to be like curved outwards for the room. I mean, it, it's like that anyway. Yeah, he's oh my god, it's pretty good size. Um, well, the armor, heavy armor, is curved, so it deflects blows better. So his cod piece is curved out anyway. Yeah, so you don't. Do I not have it? Get blown. Oh. No, I cannot type on your keyboard. So does he have a really, really fancy, just like a fancy car? <laughs> fancy armor. The fancier the armor, the smaller the. Wait a second. <laughs> That's not always true. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't have armor for, or, or like art for him. I thought there was, <coughs> but he's like a heavy set dude, like, um, like a not fat, but like. Nothing wrong with that. You know, I think Layla doesn't discriminate. Um, and he's older, like, um, probably getting up toward fifty. Mm. Um, though you can't see much of him through the armor. I think what she says is. Well, if I need anything, I'll definitely come to you. And he nods. He's like, Salami with an eye? You can also be a salami. Huh? Really? Well, <laughs> we're talking about salami. Okay. Um, <laughs> and he's like, tongue. Yeah. And he's, he nods like a little like tired and exasperated. And he's like, Now, if you please leave, I have an actual investigation to conduct. Uh, salami? Um, that's how you spell salami. Hey, I have and to he's like three different ways at work. Okay, that's the thing. Yeah, and he's like, um, so you may leave, <laughs> but if I run into you in a situation like this again with a large group of dead people and emotions toward the birds, whatever those are, it will not turn out well for you. And and never remember. like, oh, you're most kind, sir. You're the uh, you know, I will put in a good word with you with the other nobles. Yeah, surely you will be in for a promotion. He holds up his hand. He's like, never remember. Take your drunken lout self and all of your strange friends and get out. Yay. We can do that. You guys can do that. begin to head out. Mm -hmm. Um, with no, still no sign of Floon, but now with a new friend, Rainier never remember. And that is a good place to stop. We have his last name now. Floon Budde. Flagmar. Volo told you that. I know, but... Oh, he did? I didn't hear him. Yeah, like three times. Floon Blagmar. All right, I gotta go take the dog out. Do you guys have fun? Yes. Great. Cool. All right. Peace. See you later. Bye. 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 See you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.